everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here again with Melvin Lehman. And in 2007, so 10 years ago, you mm -hmm. wrote an article that, in the Mennonite world at least, went semi-viral or a lot of people read it. It got a lot of attention because yeah. of some things you said. It was called The New Conservatives, and we'll make sure and put a link to that so you can read it. It is a really interesting read. Um, actually, Frank Reed used it in history mm -hmm. class for us. That was part of our curriculum. Um, and we were asked to discuss it and dialogue about it. But anyway, it's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. Let's revisit some of that stuff. So just starting off, define what you meant by the term new conservatives. What, what group are you talking about? And let's kind of get a baseline here. Mm. Big question. <laughs> well, again, thank you, Reagan, for uh, the opportunity to talk here a little bit about this. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pushed me around just a bit uh, to, to bet, think yeah. on this and, and say, okay, yeah, what did I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> as you've said, I, I did write the article about 10 years ago. And at that particular point, I was uh, thinking long and hard about the young folks who were coming here to Faith Builders. Mm -hmm and uh, trying to read them mm -hmm. and, uh, and came to the realization that, that they had a different perspective than what I had. And, um, of course, I asked the question, well, why? What has changed? Well, that led me to reflect on things. So I grew up in the 60s, mm -hmm. uh, public high schools, mm -hmm. and uh, um, realized that I myself had taken in, uh, what would I say, the rebellious 60s or the, the just that uh, whole world that yeah, existed at that yeah. time. Uh, it was also the era of the, the uh, fragmentation of the solidarity of the, the, the old Mennonite church and even the one that I grew up in. I don't mean the congregation itself, but the conference that we belong to. And... Uh, of course, there were just a lot of divisions that happened, but the big divisions were liberal, conservative, okay. Mm -hmm. What do we mean conservative? What do we mean liberal? Mm -hmm. But back at that time, it was pretty clear this was conservative, this was liberal. So I think out of that framework. Mm -hmm. But I could tell that the people I was teaching in the 1980s, 90s, and into after the millennial change, I, I did not think in the same terms I did. That person is the person I'm calling the new conservative. Cause, so they're not coming out of that 60s and 70s perspective. Mm -hmm. they, they, they decidedly, though, are not liberal. They don't think like a liberal does. Okay. Okay. Not at least the liberals I knew in the 60s and the 70s, the liberals I went to school with. Um, in fact, kind of, uh, we're quite open to conservative people and conservative thought. But what I heard them asking for was a compelling reason. Okay, well, what okay. are the compelling uh -huh. reasons for following the conservative path? And I heard them talking about the things that concern them that, that they really care about. Mm -hmm. and, and this is 80s, 90s, 2000s. That's era, right, particularly talking, okay. the 90s and the 2000s. Okay, so yeah. basically more my generation right. and maybe a little bit older. Okay. Yeah, 30, people who are now in their, their 25 to 50 in that age group. There so it's somewhere. kind of like the generation. It's like your generational differences almost in a way. That's right. Hmm. I myself was attracted to what I heard them talking about. Okay. And so I thought, well, why not try to sort this out a little bit, think about what are the categories and, and uh, so on. And uh, so, uh, as you've already stated, uh, our, our listeners could easily access the, the, the article itself. But I will just mention the six items that oh, were, yeah, were very yeah, important, please. if I may. Mm -hmm. And the ones I identified that would, I think, represented the new conservative. First, were, they, they do appreciate traditional practice. I don't mean they just buy in, <laughs> okay? That is, okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe better said, they don't out and out reject it just up front. Just because somebody says it's traditional, they don't say, okay, okay, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. so, oh, well, okay. While a liberal, what I call a liberal, would be a person who just automatically reacts to anything that is traditional. The new conservative does not do uh -huh. that. Okay. He's not a buy-in. Mm -hmm. He, do he doesn't mm -hmm. just say, oh, yeah, and I'm glad he doesn't. He shouldn't. Yeah. That's why I refuse to call them liberal. They're, 
had a new conservative. Second, they reject authoritarianism without relationship. I grew up in a world where you, authority might even be in an office 10 miles away, but if they spoke, you, 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 you did. The church not quite like that, but perhaps more so than what, at least what a new conservative would want. Mm -hmm. So authoritarianism with relationship. Third, seek to respect and honor other Bible-believing groups. Okay, so the, the unnecessary walls, a uh, new conservative doesn't like them. Okay, so, so why, all the, why all the divisiveness? The really good question. Values of Christian education. Yeah, now that's a big one. That's mm -hmm. a big one. Yeah. Okay, uh, and mm -hmm. obviously I'm a teacher. I'm here at Faith Builders. I, I care about education. I respect the position because I understand the concern, so I want that understood. But you, the, the more conservative or the farther you go, you, the deeper you go into conservative thought, the more anti-educational you tend to be. And, mm -hmm. and a, a, it's a little unfair statement, I know, but I, mm -hmm. generally speaking, probably true. The new conservative does not think in those terms. He's, he actually sees education as, as an ally to the kingdom and to his church and to his life. Hmm. The next one, or the fifth one that I mentioned, is believes that separation from the world in thought and practice begins in the heart and affects every area of life, not just arbitrarily selected areas. Yes, I've heard, I've heard a lot, a lot of friends from Bible school that I would have went yeah. with would have said things very, almost word for word like that. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Um, and uh, I, I'm right on board with this. It's the, the, to, to categorize and so on is problematic. In fact, I like the term counterculture better than I do separation. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so sure. counterculture meaning whether it's money, whether it's uh, the house I build, whether, uh, whatever it is, uh, I'm willing to accept, not only accept, but embrace a position that uh, separates me from a world that is pagan and is mm -hmm. gung-ho about such things. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that I think is an important point. And uh, the sixth one I make is the new conservative longs for meaningful Christian community as a basis for personal growth and effective mission activity. Mm -hmm. the, the Christian community thing is what I'm keying in on here. My own sons, I hear them almost wistfully saying, well, Dad, help us to understand what the Christian community was like that you grew up in. And I hear them wanting, wanting a level of community that, is, that they, seems just a little beyond their grasp in today's Anabaptist circles. Um, yeah. I'm not quite sure how to get my finger quite on that, but I know that's the new conservative wants it pretty badly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those six things are the ones that generally outline who the new conservative is. This is a very unique blend of, of mindsets and, and culture and mm -hmm. kind of reaction to, uh, you know, reaction to traditionalism, mm -hmm. I guess you could use that word, yeah. and, and liberalism. Yeah. So with such a unique combination, where is this headed and how are they, how is this group, the new conservatives? You know, really, my generation making con contributions um, to the church. Oh boy, uh, a great question. Where where is it headed? Uh, first, I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I'll, I'll, I'll still <laughs> make a few comments about it. I I think the new conservatives are tilted toward tolerance. Okay. When I say tilted, I again, there's always a continuum here of where we're really at, but mm -hmm. tilted toward tolerance and away from raw authority in institutional organization. Now, I'd say that because, to address the question of, so where is it headed? Uh, my summary statement actually that I wrote down in my notes was uh, that I think that the new conservatives will struggle with the administrative structures that actually will move their ideals mm. forward. I'm old enough now and have had and have experienced enough failure myself I'm not talking about personal failure, but failure of trying to get accomplished what I wanted to get accomplished, to realize that the, the actual structures that are required to move a vision forward are understood by very few people. And, and, it, and I think mm. the new conservatives will have to learn that there are structures that move things forward. This tilt toward tolerance, I'll tell you a place where I see this. 
when I watch the new conservative parent actually parenting a child, um, they do not parent it the way Sheila and I do. They did. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Okay. And, and I don't mean to be negative so much as to say that it's clear that they, they think that they can talk their children relationally into fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. My warning is this. You can't talk everybody in terror. I thought you could. Mm -hmm. I actually thought if you're skillful enough that you're persuasive enough, you can talk anybody into anything. Mm -hmm. Not true. Um, a child does need to be raised to understand that no means no. Yes means yes. Sit here means sit here. And so on. I think the way the new conservative answers the question I'm trying to push out here mm -hmm. will say a lot about where it actually heads. If they can create mm -hmm. the structures and if they can actually you know the difference between godly tolerance that leads toward holiness of lifestyle and, and a tolerance that really just opens the door to a crass worldliness. So I'm waiting to see how that works. And it's been a 10 years since you wrote that article. Do you see it going down, up, what's, you know, or is the, it too early to say? The new conservatives that I know, and I would be frank and say they're, they're mainly people who circulate through faith builders and so forth sure. and so on, are pretty alert to this and aware of it. And I, I really can appreciate their willingness to actually engage the discussion. Hmm. Let's say the mm -hmm. discussion of tolerance. Uh, it feels to me as though we have a good chance, uh, it, uh, frankly. Ask well, me at that, the right that, time. <laughs> that's hopeful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sometimes tell people, ask me at a different time of the day, and I'll be so pessimistic. It's unbelievable. Yeah, but yeah. In but, general, I feel hmm. pretty optimistic about it. Well, and just the fact that we're having these conversations and the fact that you wrote this article and it did strike such mm -hmm. a chord, you, you, you're hitting something that my generation is feeling, and we just don't know quite what to do with it. That, that's the way it seems to me, yes. Yeah, and, and yeah. really, the, when I read it, you know, for class, which would have been several years ago, I guess, under Frank Reed. It, yeah, it was like, whoa, this really makes so much more sense. And at least it gives me a baseline mm -hmm. to work from. Yeah. And, and, and even now, like revisiting and going through this again, I'm just like, yeah, I'm really seeing the potential, but also, yeah. you know, it, it could be, uh, yeah, how it could go either way. It could, yes. Um, hmm. But let's, let's get practical. What's some mm -hmm. positives of this mm -hmm. and what's some negatives? Uh-huh. Uh, very, very good question. Uh, some positives in particular are, is an emphasis, uh, sorry, a mission emphasis. Okay, okay. And, sure. and a particular one that I'm intrigued by. Uh, yeah, your generation uh, has become very interested in the children of the world. So mm -hmm. when I was growing up, uh, prison ministry was the big thing. If you, sure, It was sure. the popular yeah. thing, that's what you did. Well, good thing. I was involved in one for 16 years. Really? Okay. Yeah, I loved it, uh, don't regret it at all, but you always had that impression you were working at things from the wrong end. The emphasis now, it feels to me, from the new conservatives is more back to, 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 to the children. Okay. Uh, uh, at least the ones uh -huh. I know. Yeah, lots of interest yeah, no, in like I, Yeah. Uh, lots of interest that. in like, um, oh, your, your uh, uh, child care places and mm -hmm. for the, your pregnancy centers and uh, and uh, things like that. Yeah. Oh, it's caring at the right place. Uh, huh. it, it's values at the right place. The, 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 the scriptures are clear. If your religion on defile is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction mm -hmm. and to keep oneself on spot from the world. It's kudos to, to the new conservatives for putting their finger at the right place. I'm not saying that we were doing the wrong thing in the prisons. Sure. Sure. Just saying that it feels right to me that we're, we're, we're being very, very interested in the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's, I think, a very, very positive thing. I already mentioned earlier the, uh, the uh, community emphasis. Mm -hmm. And I hear that uh, more and more and more. I'm not quite sure if the new conservative has identified what they mean by community. So, so what is that? Is that living close together? Proximity? Oh. Is it... Is it mm -hmm just a feeling of camaraderie? Is it a, we have one goal that we're pushing to? I, I'm not quite sure what all they mean, but it's good talk.
Uh, mm -hmm. it, and mm -hmm. it, uh, again, it feels to me, as I said earlier, that the new conservatives' work is to bring some of that into some structures that actually do see those ideals emerge as, uh, mm -hmm. as realities. Mm -hmm. I like the rejection of affluence. <laughs> uh, yeah. A yeah. bit of warning. That, uh, boy, that can circle around and bite you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I was a part of the 60s, and well, we were very much that way, anti-affluence. Plastic society, we called our fathers and forefathers. <clears throat> well, interestingly enough, my generation, by the time we were in our 40s, we had bought into it. And we're okay, maybe worse, maybe worse than the generation earlier. In mm -hmm. what way? Well, on the honesty issue. My generation was willing to, to, to actually be dishonest for gain. Mm -hmm. The generation who had reacted to the plastic society then were willing to build on the plastic society in the end and even introduce the dishonesty and a whole lot of other things with it. The new conservative generally frowns on money grabbing and, and just so much effort to put into, yeah, the, yeah, in, yeah. Into, and, into the financial. And that's something I've seen, I mean, I've started hearing that a lot more. Yeah. It's just like... It's to be lied. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. Uh, it, it, mm. So I, I feel very, very positive about that. A, a negative or so, uh, you can't be all things to all men. It, this is that tolerance thing a little bit, kind of coming back and circling back and saying that uh, at the end of the day, you do have to, well, maybe at the beginning of the day and the end of the day, uh, you have to somewhere make some differences. You, it, it, I just let my statement stand. You can't be all things to all men. And if you try, try to do that, um, you, tend to, you end up being almost nothing to anybody. And mm -hmm. so th there does have to be some clarity there. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not pushing now back to say, well, you need to, that everybody needs to identify with the conservative Anabaptist constituency. I think it's a very good uh, group to identify sure. with. But sure. it's one needs to create an identity. And, and I feels a little ambiguous for, to me for the, for the new conservatives. I, I know this is kind of repeating myself, but I'll say it again. The new conservatives, so not really negative, it's maybe an observation, need to build a sustainable culture. Now, I, I use the word culture here because it's probably the newest frontier that I'm working on. Culture is extremely important. It's not everything, but it's important. And what do I mean sustainable? Well, even for myself, am I passing my core values to the next generation? What does the next generation actually carry with them? I don't mean that they should mimic us and be just like us, but th they should clearly carry the core values forward. And I'm wondering if the new, cons so those six things I read. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, so the next generation Will, will, will they actually have imbibed them and, and will they carry them forward? Here's the thing that people mm -hmm. forget. Values are carried forward generationally by traditions. Don't mm -hmm. think specific Mennonite traditions now. But think of Christmas, for example. There's all kinds of values that surround that, that if you were suddenly to somehow magically be able to excise the tradition of Christmas from Western society. You okay. could just make it disappear. Uh -huh. I know it's a mind game, but supposing you could. Mm -hmm. What would happen to the values that are attached there that, that almost everybody in Western society talks about going home on Christmas, at Christmas time and so on? All that yeah. would disappear. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. So it's not so much artificial traditions as it is traditions that actually they, they actually are integrated and they carry forward the mm. uh, the values uh, I'm not sure that the new conservatives are building those that's now, a really good point yeah I w I, I've never thought of that before uh, well think about it mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know I, I'm doing some writing on this right now and, mm -hmm and just observing that even in non-Christian non circles, in the pagan world, yeah. uh, it's, you know, your baseball games, your, all, all the stuff that's involved, or these are the traditions that, that carry their, their values forward, you know. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's, that's enough for now, stuff. but those, those are some things. I yeah, think. some things definitely. With those, um, one, one criticism of, of this, and I think of the original article too, is just, well, isn't this just another way of saying mm -hmm. this is people transitioning from conservative Amish or, or Mennonite into more mainstream Christianity? Isn't that just what the new conservatives are? Uh, I'm optimistic that it is not. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, normally there is not just a choice between this way or that way. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a sense, there are some questions that are that way. That, you know, we sing the song, there's one door, only one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see this question as being a one door or this door, this one or this one. Okay. Liberalism or, or conservatism, so to speak. I think there is, there is an, uh, an option. Actually, can I read just a little section from the Would end? You please. Yeah. Say it this way. Finally, I apologize for not being able to think of a better word than new conservatism. To define the stream of thought that I'm attempting to identify, personally, ha personally have a deep respect for the contributions of the old conservative positions during the 20th century and have no desire to devalue that contr contribution by suggesting that there is a new way that we must follow. I'm not saying that. Okay. The path that leads to God is an old path that many saints have trod before us and were brethren with them. So rather than talk about is this just another path to liberalism, I don't see it that way at all. I really see it more aligned with conservative ideals. It has a better chance of carrying, actually, I think it has a better chance of carrying forward the ideals that my father had by a long shot than does the huh. really extreme conservatives or the liberals. I, okay, I got that. Okay, that makes sense. I, I really honestly do uh, because even though I, I have a heart for the old conservatives, I'm not stupid. There, of course, are some serious flaws there that are problematic. Sure. And I think that the, the new conservative path has a chance, I think, has the best chance mm. of, of grabbing hold of what's best in that old conservative flow and actually pulling it mm. into a bit of a different perspective. Uh -huh. But not one so so different that uh, it's totally unrecognizable as being connected or finding its roots in the 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 conservative to conservatism of the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, so that's why I feel optimistic about it, the, of saying that I don't see it as a path that is going to veer over here to really in the end just being on the liberal path. Does it have a possibility of doing that? Of course it does, absolutely. Now, let's not be foolish mm -hmm. and, or have our heads in the sand. Of course it can. But I think if it, if it can stay on course with actually honestly grappling with the issues, sorting through some of the debris and pulling it into some of the framework we've talked about here and enlarging on it a bit and so on, I'm, I'm hopeful that it really is the and the path forward for next hundred years. So is this then, is this mindset something that is truly unique or is this something that in a sense every generation goes through? And, and really what can we learn from this mindset? It's probably not wise for us to think that something is uniquely unique. And by that I mean brand new. Uh, we're human beings. And we're way down the line here, so human beings have experienced a lot of things. And so I, it's not that I would say that, aha, we've landed on something so brand new that everybody mm. needs to get on it. it, it, it this, this, this will fix our problems. I don't think so. Uh, however, I'd like to hope that we are grappling with the right issues and we'll find the uh, perhaps a unique path in the world in which we live even among Christendom, so to speak. Here's a book that I would, uh, I don't know if you've read it or not. It's called uh, uh, Vision, Doctrine, War, uh, James Junka. 
I, it's have, a, it's I a, have not read it, no. It's a part of a four-part series. Okay, I've read the, some of that series, okay. but not that book, yeah. This is, it chronicles the 1890s to the 1930s. Yeah. 1870s, I'm sorry, to the 1930s. <laughs> I just read it. And I was amazed, astounded, at the, the, the recording here of some conversations and movements uh, that are so similar to the things that we are actually <laughs> talking about that when I saw this question that you raised, I'm uh -huh. like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is a certain amount of this, of this cyclic thing that, you, uh -huh. that is somewhat recognizable, particularly if you read something like this and realize, wow, mm. they were asking the same questions that we're wanting to ask mm -hmm. uh, in a different time, different setting. Uh, and and so on, and yet, so I'm being like modern scholars are, even though I'm not one myself. It's like, well, yeah, it depends on how you look at the question here. Uh, from one perspective, it can feel cyclic, and that's the reason why I'm saying we shouldn't be stupid and act as if that that uh, this is so brand new that it's linear, headed the right direction. And oh, and, yeah, okay. Yeah. But but let's also be hopeful that we actually can plow ground, particularly in our generation that hasn't been plowed. Uh, that perhaps it was plowed ten generations ago. I don't know for sure. Uh, but uh, we have the opportunity, and I think we have some perspective and some vision for it. And uh, I'm I'm quite hopeful that the the new ground that we're that I'm talking about is unique to our generation. And hence, we have a unique chance to carry forward these ideas. And then, let me give you an example here. It says, take community. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this is a, a, a rich ideal of, of uh, the new conservative. Well, um, we've got phones, and we've got uh, computers, and we've got endless array of stuff that an earlier generation did not have to actually push forward community. We all, ah, we all know okay. that it also has a potential to go the other way, <laughs> quite, mm -hmm. quite strongly. Mm -hmm. But I just use that as a simple example to say, so we have a unique opportunity to plow new ground in our generation and perhaps uh, make some headway that was not made previously. But I say that with humility and just a lot of respect for those who've gone on before us. Mm -hmm. So maybe the maybe the mindsets that that are going through my generation, the new conservatives and so forth, um, maybe those particular concepts aren't necessarily new, but the but the setting that they're in, the context Absolutely. is totally new. Absolutely. Um, so that's a challenge. No generation <laughs> that I, I I teach world history, no generation that I have ever read about or even thought about has anywhere close the number of things at their fingertips as yeah, a generation wow. today. Well, we have we have a lot of things to work through. We do. It sounds like oh we my, Whew. wow, wow. Well, thank you for explaining some of that and mm -hmm. yeah, taking the time and whew, a lot mm -hmm. to think about. <laughs> a lot to think about. Praise the Lord. Wow. Well, thank you everyone for for watching as well. And um, yeah, if you like what you see, come back. We do new episodes each week and leave a comment if you have a question and. Um, Hopefully we'll keep making stuff like this. This has been really interesting. Thanks again for your time. You're very um, welcome. Melvin. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed this. So, yeah, I guess we'll see uh, all of you in the next episode.